If you have your Bibles, I want to go right to the heart of the matter tonight. I want to talk to you about God's highest will is health and healing. God's highest will is health and healing. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindnesses and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. God's highest will is health and healing. I want you to just for a moment turn off everything you've ever known from the past. Turn off every situation that did not turn out like you wanted it to turn out. I want you tonight just to just look to the word of God like you knew nothing about health and healing. And let's let God speak to our hearts in this room. No matter what comes or what goes or what I understand or what I don't understand, God's highest will is health and healing. This week, it's been called to my attention again, trying to find a parking place around the hospital. Drove out to Tyler, Texas. I thought, surely... It won't be hard out there, but we drove round and round and round the parking garage and finally someone pulled out before we found a place to park. Oh, you probably could have parked two or three blocks down the street, but I'm talking about designated parking around a hospital. It's hard to find a parking place around a hospital. If it's been said once, it's been said many times to me in the last few weeks or months by a doctor, by a nurse, or by a hospital worker. Every bed is full. Our hospital is at capacity. Does that mean that there's not a bed available? There are probably like in some hotels, certain sections that are reserved for the more emergency type of thing. I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor. But I know it's been told me many times. In fact, we waited for two or three hours for the only room in the hospital to be clean so that they could bring them out of uh, surgery and to place them in a room. I've never waited as long as we did on that type of situation. We'd waited and we waited. And finally, went down to the area and there was a nurse that was not very gospel friendly. She said, well, that would not be fair to the other people in in, uh, recovery to let you in to pray for this man. (laughs) Well, there was another nurse that gave us a wink and kind of called us to the side and she said, let's go around this way, I'll get you in. And we did. God always has a way, doesn't he? Well, that's kind of the attitude that you run into sometimes of people. The world still doesn't know how important all of us are. Our presence, our prayers, our faith make the difference in clutch situations. God hates sickness. God hates sin. Sin destroyed the paradise in the Garden of Eden that God gave to Adam and Eve. And God also hates sickness because on the cross, even in Psalms 103 before Calvary, it said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. All right, if verse 3 is true, then there's something that we're missing somewhere. Win a few, lose a few. And I've had my share of memorial services over the last few days and weeks. It's very challenging times. So why would I minister along these lines when you've been in situations like that? Because I want you to stay here until God gets through with you. I want to stay here until God's through with me. God needs all of us. I have seen experienced workers, experienced ministers, experienced ministers' wives that it took years to be where they were. They're okay. But we're the ones that are here. 
And I have a jealousy, a godly jealousy, to see every one of you fulfill what God called you to do. There's several verses of Scripture. You know the verses of Scripture from Isaiah 53, 5 and 1 Peter 2, 24. We were, we are healed by his stripes. We were, we are healed. Why would it be said in the Old Testament and repeated again in the New Testament if it were not true that by his stripes we are healed? Some people say, well, Brother Nichols, you know, it's all in the genes. No, it's not. Some of it is. Maybe a lot of it is. But it's not all in the genes. You just might as well say, well, everybody in our family dies a drunkard. It's all in the genes. You, you're going to break out of that or you're going to be the next one? A man who was a member of our church for a number of years, he told me, every man in our family has a heart attack at 54. Guess how old he was when he had a heart attack? He was a tennis pro playing with his doctor, playing with his heart doctor friend. And he has a heart attack on the tennis court, 54 years of age. Well, he changed his faith, got in line with the word of God. Thank God that heart attack did not take him out. And he lived for a number of years. But you know, if we're not careful, we'll let Satan cheat us out of what God called us to do. And we'll let Satan cheat us out of what God called us to be and the assignments that God has given us. What I'm saying is, is, is not critical. My, my father passed away too early. And there's a lot of other folks that, that it seems like. And in spite of everything, we don't know everything. I know some people finish it and get out of here. I, I can understand that. John the Baptist did. Jesus did. There are others that I could call in the word of God that did. But all things being equal, we need the senior citizens of this congregation as long as God will keep you here. I need your faith. I need your encouragement. I need to just see your physical presence. There's times I've said, your being here blesses me. Me? Yes. We encourage one another. We bless one another. Well, it's all in the genes. Well, that's interesting because two-thirds of the Gospels is all about health and healing. Two-thirds of the Gospels. Two-thirds of Jesus' ministry was involved in healing the sick and bringing health and healing to people's lives. Now, I must be very practical with this message for a moment. If I ate today or in the last few years like I ate the first few years of my ministry, I'd be out of here because it seemed like everything I loved to eat wasn't good for me. The more ketchup, the better. The more grease, the better. I couldn't pass a chicken fried steak opportunity. I saw one advertised the other day, the perfect chicken fried steak. I said, I'm staying here and I'm leaving you alone. Don't kid yourself. Genes are no genes. Even in faith, you can't defy the laws of nature. And I was in a memorial service the other day. A minister went home far too soon. And even the ministers in the memorial service spoke of his poor diet, traveling, inter international travel, traveling all night, eating grease and stuff and everything that he seemed to love was not good for him. You say, where in the world are you coming from, Pastor? I want you to hang out for a while. I want you to stay here for a while. You say, well, I'm young. That's what I was thinking when I, you know, I'm young and I can get by with anything, but I'll tell you, indigestion set in and all of a sudden, I didn't go to a doctor. God spoke to my heart and said, change your diet. Change your diet. And it still isn't as perfect as it should be, but I'm telling you, it's light years ahead of what it used to be. I would not be here today. I mean, there's not a doubt in my mind. My father was not careful about his diet. He didn't eat junk food, but I mean, dad was just not careful about his diet. And I've tried to learn. I've tried to learn some things. Some people say, well, I'm homesick for heaven. Yeah, but you call the doctor every time you feel bad. <laughs> oh, I'm homesick to go home and be with Jesus. Yeah, but I mean, oh, get the, get the pill, get the doctor. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying you're not as homesick as you thought you were. <laughs> you just sit and say, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. 
There's a daily diet that God's calling us to be more careful about. There's a daily confession of faith. It really works. Even Reader's Digest has picked up on this very keenly through the years of how positive people live longer than negative people. I mean, leading publications have articles and numerous articles about people with a positive faith attitude. There's daily confessions of faith and there's daily, of course, scriptures that you read daily and stand on, a daily positive faith attitude. And all I can do, that's as far as I can go. But one of these mornings, on Sunday morning, I'm just going to have, I'm going to have somebody I know, and we're going to lock the doors, and we're going to let them come up here and tell us how to live longer. On Sunday morning, and you don't know when I'm going to do it. And I'll probably have to change some things myself when I hear that, but I'm going to do it. You know why? Because I want you to hang out for a while, longer. I need you. I need your love. I need your faith. I need your prayers. God's highest will is health and healing. Think health. Speak health. Don't get caught up in all the silly things that people say. Well, well, you know the negative things people say about health and, and whatever. You hear them quite often. Now in the 13th chapter of Luke's gospel, let's go there and see what the Lord is saying. Luke, the 13th chapter. You just can't be around hospitals as often as our staff and folks like we are without it having a challenge in your own spirit. Luke, the 13th chapter, verse 11, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years and was, she was bowed together, could in no wise lift herself. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he said unto her, woman, thou art loosed. Say it with me, loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God and the rule of the synagogue answered with indignation. You'd think they would be into health, but they weren't. Because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them therefore come to be healed, and in them come therefore to be healed and not on the Sabbath. Can you imagine that? Religious, religion has not changed their attitude. People shouldn't be healed, especially on Sunday. What better day to be healed than on a Sunday? Unless you need it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or Saturday. Then the Lord answered him and said, he was real sweet about it, thou hypocrite. <laughs> you don't need Greek or Hebrew on that one, do you? Hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan hath bound? Whom Satan hath bound? In these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. When he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, at least for a moment, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years. 18 years is too long. 18 months is too long. 18 weeks is too long. 18 days is too long. Ought she not be free? I remember a story that, I've that it really meant something to me. Bob DeWeese was Oral Roberts' right-hand man. In fact, when his tent was in Fort Worth on two different occasions back in the 50s, it was Bob DeWeese that taught the morning healing class. And to get a healing card to be prayed for, you had to come to the healing class in the morning under the tent and be taught about health and healing and what God's Word and will had to say about that. Bob DeWeese was the man that traveled by Oral Roberts' side, and they were inseparable in those early days of ministry. Through the years, there came a time when Bob DeWeese had a massive heart attack. And the doctors were questioning as to what the outcome would be. Oral Roberts went to the hospital. And he said, Bob, he said, there's a decision to make here. He said, how long did your mother live? 
Now, if I remember correctly, it was 84, 85 years of age. How long did your father live? And it happened to be just the same age that Bob DeWeese was at that time. He said, whose genes are you going to choose? He said, I believe I'll choose my mother's genes. Well, it was within a year or so of what his age was going to be. You're following me. What Oral Roberts was saying, put your faith on the line. Break out of the traces. Don't be one of the fifth generation of this or the fourth generation of that. Claim your mother's genes. He did. And if I'm not mistaken, lived to be about the same age as his mother. Thank God your faith can make the difference. I said, thank God your faith can make the difference. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for medical breakthroughs. I thank God you know, for medicines that help. And Earl Roberts has taught the body of Christ so much about how that God heals through faith as well as medicine. But when it's all said and done, it still comes back to faith in God and what God has said. And believing that God said what he meant and he meant what he said. God hates sickness. I said God hates sickness. A large part of Jesus' work on Calvary was that all of our sicknesses may be healed, that all of our iniquities may be cleansed. And I think any one of you would agree with me, anyone that walks down this aisle, if they will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord, how many, how many sins does Jesus forgive? 80%, 60%? Ninety-eight percent? What do we teach and preach? If someone comes forward, how many sins will Jesus forgive? He will forgive all of our sins. And the scripture is very plain. You say, well, I'm not seeing it. That's why I'm after it. That's why I'm after it tonight. I want to stir up your pure mind. I want to stir us up. I want all that God has for Pastor Bob Nichols. I want all that God has for Joy Nichols to be manifested. I want all that God has for my family. And somewhere you've got to break out of the traces of where things have been. Somehow you've got to break out of tradition and break out of all of my family is this and all my family is that. Some of you have a trail of drunkards throughout your families. And if drugs had been that easy to get a hold of, you'd probably had a family of druggies as well as alcoholics. But that doesn't mean you have to be the next one. It doesn't mean you have to be the next victim. You may have been the victim of, of a series of, of poverty-stricken situations, but it's time that you break out of the mold and know that it's God's will to prosper you and for you to be in health even as your soul prospers. Folks, it's time to break out of the mold. It's time to break out of the traces. It's time to have God's best in our life. I'm not being critical tonight. I, I'm just mad at Satan. I am thoroughly disgusted with the evil one because where he gets every one of us is on the lie, a thought that goes down to the heart and gets into the spirit. And after a while, we're parroting his bondage, his sickness, his death, his poverty. Oh, it's just as, well, it's, no, it's not just as easy to talk positive. It takes more effort, but you live longer and you make more and you're happier with life if you'll approach life like God says. Praise be unto the Lord. Well, I wasn't taught that in my church. It's time you come to a church where you can be taught this. It's God's will to heal all of your sicknesses, forgive all of your iniquities. Job chapter 42, verse 10, God calls sickness captivity. You see, sickness holds us captive. You're a captive. Something about it brings captivity. And God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and God gave Job twice as much as he had before. Please do not let your head go back into your computer and start just thinking the same old thoughts you've been thinking. Act like you've never heard this message before. Act like you've heard what I'm saying for the very first time in your life. Just act like you were a Job and all of a sudden one day everything was swept out from under you and your children were gone and your possessions were gone and your wife said, curse God and die. You scraped the boils and your friends 
Friends like that, you need no enemies. Now the friends come in and take several chapters to tell him how wrong he is. Everyone has the answer for your life. I'll tell you who has the answer for your life. It's God. God has the answer for your life. The Bible said that God turned, God turned, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and God gave Job twice as much as he had before. You know, I was talking to a person recently and I said, you know, you've got to release forgiveness in, in, in this divorce situation. They said, I believe I've taken care of that. But then there were some people that had been very critical. I said, but have you forgiven the people that were critical toward you in this situation? Revelation. Unforgiveness is unforgiveness wherever it is. And you don't pick and choose who you forgive and who you don't forgive. Forgiveness is a choice. And you say, well, I tried that. I do understand that. But if it takes every day, three times a day, seven times a day to say, Father, as a faith action of my will, I release forgiveness to this person or to these people in the name of Jesus. It may take a while, but it'll turn around. God turned the captivity of Job. God called sickness captivity. Jesus called sickness bondage in what we just got through reading because sickness is binding and restricting. Woman, thou art loosed. She's loosed. Then he went on to say, not only in verse 12, but verse 16 of chapter 13 of Luke's gospel, ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this bondage on the Sabbath day. Did you know that's what God's saying about every one of us in this auditorium tonight? It's God's will that you be set free from your sin. It's God's will that you be set free from your family tree. If every time you shake it rotten, fruit falls off. <laughs> Get out from under that tree. Stop shaking your family tree. Someone said, have you, you know these people that investigate your family and tells you everything about your family? Someone wisely said, if you follow your family long enough, you'll find somebody hanging by a limb. <laughs> oh, we like the noble. We like you know, the, the prince or the princess. But boy, if you go far enough, you'll find a thief. <laughs> you, 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 well, we'll leave that one alone, but you, you'll, you'll find some fruit on that tree that you don't want to eat. Why don't you just said, we're the breakout generation. We're the breakout generation in our family. No matter what my daddy, my mama, my grandfather, if they're good, fine, just leave that alone. But in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking out of this bondage. I'm coming out of this not enough mentality. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm free. In the name of Jesus, I'm free. Woman, thou art loosed. Whew. Woman, thou art loosed. Oh, praise God. You're loosed, woman. But sir, I've been bound all these years, but now you're loosed. This woman whom Satan hath bound, ought she not be free, especially on the Sabbath day? Holy Spirit called sickness oppression. Remember, God called sickness captivity. Jesus called sickness bondage. But the Holy Spirit called sickness oppression. Sickness attacks our minds and our emotions. You know I'm telling you the truth. Sickness attacks our minds, our thinking. You even be around sickness if you're not careful. Man, when I walk into a hospital, I, I take authority. I take authority over any and every spirit. Amen. I, I, I don't want thoughts I go in with compassion. I go in and identify. I go in with faith. But in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to let that thing get on me. When you go into a memorial service, yes, yes, we help, we comfort. And I give myself 100% in a memorial service. But if I just fell apart, if I just fell apart every time I had a memorial service, I would be of no value to the body of Christ. We go, we weep, we sit where they sat. But we come out of that thing and say in the name of Jesus, one may have gone early, maybe, who, who knows? We're not the judge. But in the name of Jesus, I'm going to go out and tell as many people as possible, we need you, God needs you, the church needs you, the kingdom of God needs you, and get up, get up and fight the lie of the enemy, that can of worms in your head. You get a pain, you think, oh, dear God, all our family has that pain in the same place. 
In the name of Jesus, when you're, before your feet hit the floor, you ought to say, who forgiveth all of mine iniquities, who healeth all of my diseases. I mean, before your feet get on the floor in the morning, you ought to say, this is going to be a good day. It's going to be a God day. It's going to be a victorious day. Whatever Satan has planned for me, it's going to turn around. It's going to turn around. Now, there's a lot of good churches, but I've watched people leave here and go to a lesser ground, go to a lesser uh, spiritual plane, and I'm telling you the bondage and the mess and, and the stuff that happens in people's lives, listen to me. I mean, it's a challenge if you're in a good atmosphere. You get off the ground of faith, and I'm telling you, you are in a world of hurt. You need to stay where the word of faith is preached, where the word of faith is taught, where the word of faith is practiced, where we stand upon God's word. It's in a memorial service just a few months ago, and the minister stood up, and he said, he said, I know some of you think you'll get over it, but you'll never get over it. Every day, you'll never, I mean, it was the most negative thing. I, I wanted to, I don't know, maybe, I just wanted to stand up and say, no! Give these people some hope! So someone's gone home, we win either way. We win if we go to heaven, we win if we stay. But others win if you stay. Others win if you stay. So many others will win if you stay. Tell people in the memorial, so you'll never get up. Every day it gets worse. And I read something in the paper the other day, supposed to comfort people in that time. And it was the same old rhetoric, the same old religious stuff. You'll never, it, you'll never come out of this. You, oh, listen to me. Man, dear God, I've been in some of the toughest situations that you could be in as a person and as a minister. But I stand to tell you tonight, Romans 8, as long as I read it, and if I read it again tonight, it said nay in all of these things. Nay in all, all, A-double-L, -L, nay in all these things, in all these things, in all your things, in all my things. Oh, some people say, oh, Brother Nichols, how do you, and Sister Nichols, how do you do with all the, yes, we do have, we do have our playful. Yes, we have had our faith challenge, but you know what keeps bringing us back on our feet again? It's nay in all these things that we are more than conquerors. Nay, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. I don't like every situation I find myself in. I don't like every situation I find my family in. I don't like everything that the enemy brings by and sometimes slips in. But I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to roll over and play dead. I'm going to stand and stand and withstand and withstand and stand and stand and withstand and stand and stand and withstand. In the name of Jesus. I think it was Smith Wigglesworth that said, if you were in a healing line and you prayed for someone and they dropped dead, what would you do? He said, I'd say next. Now that sounds hard. It sounds harsh. But you know what he's going for? He's going for life. He's going for life. He's going for life. God hates sickness. Oh, God calls sickness captivity. Jesus calls sickness bondage. And the Holy Spirit calls sickness oppression. How that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost in power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. <laughs> That's what I love. Whatever you call us, fanatics, charismatics, full gospel, crazy, whatever you call us, I'm after everything that God has for us. I'm hungry for God. I'm hungry for more of God. I'm hungry to see more people saved. I'm hungry to see more people healed. I'm hungry to see the power of God in a greater way. I'm hungry to lift up holy hands without wrath and praise God. I want everything God has for us. I'll tell you, when mama came out of the Baptist church, she came out fanatic. She was that way until the day she died. She drove her car into the parking lot of Harris Hospital and held on to those keys. She said, when I'm through here, I'm going to drive my car home. Well, she went on to be with Jesus. But you know, that spunk, I like that spunk. Just leave me alone. I'm going to live all my life. If I've got seven more days, I'm going to live seven more days. Don't cut me short. Don't take away the joy of life and living. Don't take away my hope. I'm going to live all my life. And I say what Jesus said, ought not this woman whom Satan hath bound be loosed. Please. You know, the natural way of the flesh would say, let's sympathize. Let's go to that rationale. 
And I don't have all the answers, but there's one answer I have. I want you to hang around for a while. I want you to be a soul winner. I need you. I need you. God needs you. The church needs you. Your family needs you. The community needs you. 